Yeah. Hi guys. So um, GPT four launched yesterday, and up up until yesterday morning, I didn't even know that it was going to be launched. It was one of my friends from Kenya that sent me the link, and I uh, got ready to watch the demo. Who doesn't want to see a new version of uh, GPT or ChatGPT released when GPT three is already blowing our minds? So um, a lot of wonderful things from the product. Uh, a lot of new features. It now has an image recognition. It, has, it now has image recognition uh, capabilities. But um, for a developer like me, one part stood out. And that was the part where the guy doing the demo scribbled a mock-up, a, just a very rough sketch of a website on a notepad. And he was able to feed the image into GPT-4. And GPT-4 created... A, or rather wrote out the code for the website including the javascript it was a joke uh, website it was supposed to you were supposed to click a button and it was go going to print out a joke and that was just mind-blowing and from that point in time i've been seeing a lot of tweets and a lot of posts about how gpt4 would eventually come to take developer jobs and i think the guy also built a discord bot which was also pretty pretty cool even though it took a while to get it working and my attention was drawn to this posts I've been seeing, even people making very, very bold statements about how GPT-4 is going to just clear out developers and we are not going to need developers anymore. So since last night, I've been gathering my thoughts around that statement, that claim that people are making that it's going to replace developer jobs. And I would like to share a few things. As you can see, I'm looking at my phone a lot. I would like to share a few things that I feel might not make that true. Um, the summary is... I don't think it's going to be taking developer jobs, but I'm going to be using the following points to, to buttress my, my fact or my point about that. The first is that while the guy was trying to, or using GPT-4 to generate all this code, there was a lot of debugging involved. So you first tell GPT-4 to create a Discord bot, but then feeding the Discord bot and it generates errors. One wonderful thing is that he was able to take the errors and also put it back into GPT-4 and GPT-4, you know, refactored the code, then moved to another stage of error until he was able to get it working. So I, I wasn't comfortable with the back and forth debugging that is required because if you're still going to have to debug a lot of stuff, then how would a non-developer undo that? How would someone that is not experienced with it? Technology, even if you have just written Hello World and you want to use GPT-4 to write your code, if your code starts throwing errors, you won't be able to fix it. You won't be able to fix it. So that's, that, that's the first thing, that's the first issue I found. The next thing is uh, conformity with personal style and design patterns. Most developers have their own signature style when coding. Uh, we even argue tabs or spaces, argue camel case or snake case. And... GPT-4 has its own opinions too as to the kind of code or the style it uses to write its code. And that might not be your own style. It might just give you a, a bunch of code like what we used to get from Dreamweaver in those days and just spit it out and you will be having problems even understanding what the code is doing despite the fact that the application that it built is actually working. And also, what about design patterns? How about using design patterns like the factory pattern, like the singleton pattern, or the decorator pattern. I know you can actually tell uh, GPT-4 to follow these design patterns, but we all know we all have our signature style, and you might end up getting code that you're not used to, and you're going to spend more time debugging the code, more time making the code conform to your style guide than actually doing productive developer work. So at the end of the day, it kind of becomes a negative to what you want chat GPT or GPT-4 to help you to achieve, or the time you expect it to help you save. So the next point is on building complex applications. So when you have, how many instances of GPT-4 do we need to have open to build a complex application? I build complex applications and these applications can often have 10 to 15 to 20 modules. So how do you coordinate all that in a single GPT-4 session? I know that GPT-4 has longer sessions, it's capable of having longer sessions than GPT-3, but I don't think it can completely eradicate your team of five to seven developers that need to do a lot of brainstorming and need to define a lot of contracts between these numerous modules. So if we can't get to that level and we can only do simple scripts, we can only do 
pages and can have multiple pages of a, uh, of a particular website with multiple functionality written in a specific language with defined contracts according to a particular style guide, then I don't think developer jobs are at any risk. We still need a lot of collaboration between teams to define a lot of things when it comes to building complex applications and I don't think ChatGPT can undo such kind of complexity yet. Another point is on continuous improvement. Now, we all know that no application remains at its first iteration. Almost every month, there is a new feature being added. Some people even have releases every week. So how do you depend on, uh, on GPT-4 to help you do continuous improvements to your application? Uh, sure, you can have a session whereby you feed, you, it generates a code for you and you keep asking it to add a, a more features. But that's not, that's not how things occur in real life. Uh, I don't know if you can connect a session that you had last week with a session that you're about to have this week so that it can help you improve the application or also how a change in one single component that it is improving affects a component in another model. So um, I don't think that is something that GPT-4 can do at the moment, which is being smart enough to continuously improve your application through a lot of iterations and add new features and make bug fixes every day every week, every month, or every year. I don't think, I don't know how many sessions you will need for that and how aware GPT-4 has to be to undo such kind of scenario in very complex applications. Another thing is maintainability. And this kind of, um, this is related to the, to the previous point. Another thing is maintainability. How do you um, update to latest versions of, let's say, Angular, if uh, a new version of Angular is out and GPT-4 has not been trained Currently, GPT-4 has been trained to, I think, the, the current date, I, I believe, or at least 2022. But when you need to do a lot of updates, when you need to do a lot of maintenance, security maintenance, updates in, in terms of uh, infrastructure, or just some routine tasks to clean up and refactor the code, how would GPT-4 undo all those things? How will he undo all those things? GPT-4 literally has to be a very, very conscious robot in your office to be able to know that you need this uh, sort of uh, maintenance uh, tasks to be carried out and it's carrying it out according to the way you want. Like I said, how many sessions are you going to need? How many interconnected sessions of, of GPT-4 is going to help you achieve such kind of maintenance task? So that's another problem I see. Maintaining, maintaining code is huge work and... In as much as you can get some refactoring done, definitely you can feed some pieces of your code into GPT-4 and can help you refactor it based on the instructions you give it. But I don't think on a large scale it can coordinate the whole maintenance activities that is needed to make your code stay up to date. Uh, the next thing is security. Now, um, your code are as secure as any code on Stack Overflow. We all know that these models are trained with public data. So, and even the developers advise that you should be careful of the code that you that you paste into your applications. Most of these ideas are gotten from people that have contributed code in the past. So security is something that you want to be very, very careful about. If you ask GPT-4 to help you develop a specific uh, software, let's say the Discord bot, if 10 people ask it the same thing, it will most likely give them the same code, let's say in Python, for example, it will most likely give them the same Python code. Now, this is a security flaw because your code does not, or rather your code is public and Anybody can actually guess what the structure of your code looks like, especially when they know that you're developing stuff with GPT-4. So security is something you want to be very, very conscious of. Security is something that will still have to be a conscious effort by your development team to make sure that they implement. Even if you're going to use ideas from GPT-4 or you're going to use part of the GPT-4 code, you have, to, you have to be very, very careful when it comes to security as it is very, very easy for this type of AI tools to spread vulnerable code. The next thing is trust. How many of us have had our production app go down because we just copied a piece from Stack Overflow and we pasted it in? Now, as, a, as experienced developers, you know that it is very, very risky just picking code from the internet and dumping it into your, into your million, billion dollar production app. So the trust is going to be a very, very big issue when it comes to the code that is coming from such kind of sources. And you still need a very strong review team within your firm to go through the code and make sure that it is production standard, it is production ready, and also it is scalable. Because I believe that chat GPT favors uh, efficiency and speed over 
uh, something like reliability. So it just wants to give you code that's going to work. Is It might not really take into account a lot of um, best practices when it comes to scaling your application, when it comes to making it fault tolerant, when it, make, when it, when it comes to making it configurable, or uh, even when it comes to making it easy to be integrated with other parts of your applications or other parts of your infrastructure. So trust is also something that is very, very important when you are sending code that is, is still from the internet. I don't care whether it's GPT-4 or Stack Overflow, it's still from the internet. So you have to make sure that these codes are well reviewed before you trust them enough to put them in your production application. So my final take is this. I believe that GPT-4 is not here to replace developers, it's here to help developers. A lot of us has do, have done a lot of routine work in the past that we wish was done by a junior developer or was done by a robot, and now we have a robot for that. So you can just defer a lot of routine work to GPT-4. Also, it can help give you a very good head start when you're still brainstorming or you want to do like a proof of concept. GPT-4 is going to be great for such kind of things. But will it replace developer jobs? I don't think so. So that's my take for now. Thanks for listening. Uh, GPT-4 is ex exciting, so it's most likely you're going to be seeing more videos from me on this particular topic. And if this video has been beneficial to you in any way, remember to like and subscribe to the channel.